Hey everyone, welcome back to Ballman Podcast. Uh, before we jump into the episode, just a quick, quick message. We would love you to go on our YouTube channel and hit the subscribe button, please. It helps the channel grow. It helps us get more guests. It helps us continue doing this. Everything is now synced. So our Instagram, our Facebooks are all together. We're releasing content almost daily, which is amazing. The guests are growing. Um, it's a lot of fun doing this. We hope you enjoy it. We're now on all Spotify and Google and Amazon uh, podcasts and Apple. So we're now got a variation of audio only out there as well. So yeah, let's do this. Hope you enjoy. So, Kim Marsh, first podcast. Okay. I know, I'm really nervous. <laughs> this is this actually... I don't like this situation. <laughs> I feel like I'm being... Is this actually your first podcast? Yeah. It's so weird. Aren't you privileged? Very privileged. <laughs> very privileged. Well, the yeah. is to like you. Oh, that's very cool. Because <laughs> we're friends. But you've, you've done the... Like, you've sat in front of the morning show and done all that stuff. That's pretty much the same thing, no? Not Similar. really. Or is it... I don't, like I don't like doing live. I don't like doing live TV. I that's why I'm an actor because I'm happy being somebody else. When I'm when I'm Kim, I get really anxious. You you get like more goes of being some other character. Yeah, because I pretty, it's like what I do for a living is like dress up for adults. It's like playing in the Wendy house. Do you know what I mean? Like right. <laughs> you put on the silly costume and you go, yeah, I'm someone else. Right. Whereas now I'm Kim, so it's a bit. Is that rooted? So is that where does that come from? Where's that rooted in inside? <laughs> Issues with my father. No, <laughs> no, but <laughs> it's it's so weird because you know you, I always shy away from like talking about my childhood stuff, but people are right. Like when 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 you hear like sort of you know psychoanalysis talking about you know your childhood, it is all, it is all linked. So does that come from somewhere? No, I had a really great childhood. <laughs> I just think I'm messed up. Doesn't matter. Doesn't mean you had a bad childhood. <laughs> no. It could just be that you were no. fun. Dancing around, singing um, as you were a child, I'll as you ended up. No, I'll tell you what, I was bullied as a kid. Like, really, really badly from being 10 to about 14. Oh, sure. I was bullied quite badly. And I think uh, I was always picked on because I wasn't the same as everyone else. You know, I, even way. from being, well, from being 10 years old, I knew what I wanted to do. I had, I had a dream. I had a, a clear view of where I wanted to be in my life. And I think at that age, that's quite rare. So I think when you go into a high school and you meet all these kids who are like cool and they all want to go behind the bike sheds and smoke and do whatever they're doing. And I wasn't fitting into that criteria because I used to go home and sing on my karaoke machine in the back room. Right. And I think people, found, no shame that, in that. people found that weird. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I was weird. I was the outcast. I was also a late developer. Right. So it was like, you're so flat, the walls are jealous. It was that kind of thing, you know. And I actually didn't care. I didn't care about what I looked like to anybody else. And I didn't care about... I cared about what I wanted to do. And even at that age, like, my focus was completely on that. And because of that, I was a bit different. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's a, it's definitely a rarity. Of course, you've, you've got that vision to within yourself to think, you know, I'm, I'm going to be something bigger. I, I'm one more. Yeah, that's crazy. Oh. There's so many people have got, yeah, to, that, no, that who have got to go through all mistakes and figure out, well, actually, I want to do this. I don't want to do that. I fell into this. Like, yeah. Oh, no, I made mistakes. No, but do you mean, them. like, it's, <laughs> so I mean, did you knew that you had, like, talents with, with singing, acting at that early age? Or was it just um, like you wanted, you just kind of was figuring out you wanted something more in life? So from being about six, I would get up and sing down a hairbrush. Like, and start right. singing, like, tell my parents that I was going to be famous one day. And um, when I was 10, I insisted on getting up in this. We were in a labor club. My parents used to go to this labor club every kind of right. weekend in a place called Goulburn, which is like. Where is this? In, Where you, like near Wigan, first? not far away from Wigan. Okay. And um, we'd go to this place, and my parents, would, like, go and watch different people get up and sing. It was like everyone, anyone could get up and sing. And I begged my, I remember this one weekend, I begged my parents for me to get up and sing. And they were like, no, no. And they like put it off. And they went, next week, next week, if you still want to do it. And I didn't forget. And the next week I wanted to get up and sing. And I remember that I got up and sang Cliff Richard's Living Doll. <laughs> wow. I was 10 years old. Were and that was in like full on. No, my parents didn't know until that point. And I got up on that stage and I sang with a live band and I sang this song. 
and my parents were like, wow, yeah. she actually can sing. That's so good. You had that urge to do that, to like express yourself of that. Was it just singing as well or was it acting and general form? Because I, I was yeah. similar. I was just performing when I was younger. like a, Yeah, everything. I always got the lead. My, my family would be like, do this, do that. Yeah, yeah, just copy that person on TV. You know, just that, that, yeah. It's, but was it just singing for you or was it everything? I mean, I, I was always, I was given, always given the lead role in the school plays. Same, yeah. You know, and it was one of those that I think if it's in you, it's in you. And it and it was just one of those things that, you know, the singing came first for me because it was, it was just something that I felt I needed to do, um, and I loved acting as well. But singing just was the first thing like I needed to get that out of my system. We we can all resonate with that because we're, we're all very creative people. We've I've come from a dancing choreography background. Matt's gone into acting. We went to university together, so we we kind of know like what it's like to, to perform on stage. So, yeah. how was that for you when you started getting into being on stage, the, the next level to just singing? At yeah, was it different? Did, did did you suddenly go right? Actually, I've gone from you know karaoke singing in my room, and now there's like a couple hundred people here or whatever, or you know, and did it feel different, or was it just like this is this is what it was always meant to be? So I started from from that moment. I started. I, I joined a, a little show which was called the Starlight Roadshow. It's from Liverpool, and it was loads of kids. And you'd be like, age range was like 10 to 17. And we'd go out and we perform for charity. And that was what gave me my kind of training, if you like. Um, so I was part of dancing and stuff as well with that, um, which I loved. Um, and so that like you... one genre you specialized in? Like, uh, no. Just jazz or like just contemporary, uh, just a bit of everything. Everything really. Okay. Um, well, we've seen you can move since the strictly stuff. I mean, yeah, <laughs> you know, you've got some moves, girl. I'm telling you that. <laughs> you, I mean, you can be flung this way. You Thank know, you. Got... I did break my rib though during. Did you? I did break my rib during strictly. Sure. I broke you... my rib in week three. Oh God! How did you? How did you carry on? Diazepam. <laughs> <laughs> uh, pills. <laughs> yeah. Drugs. Yeah. Yeah. That was tough, actually. Yeah. So when I, Imagine. when I, that was quite hard because I. I went into Strictly thinking, oh yeah, this will be fine. It was so hard. It yeah. was so difficult because also I was working at the same time. And then I was going after work. And learning that choreography. Training for like eight hours. Yeah. We were talking about this in the camera. You, you said it was like just consumed your life. Like it was just. It, it did. And actually, I think if I could give anyone any advice, it would be if you're going to do Strictly, leave your diary completely because you just. You don't have the time to do it and rehearsals alone are just like intense and yeah. so they, they say 12 hours minimum you can't learn a dance in 12 hours there's no way oh yeah uh, you know um there was one week that i had 40 i only had 14 hours training for the entire week and it was one of my best dances <laughs> but i think when you're under pressure you kind of just you go but in week three i broke my rib and we didn't know i'd broken my rib but we knew something was wrong and I was having physio and everything else. And it wasn't until week seven that we realized that it was actually a fracture. And I, in week seven, I was in a really bad way. And I was doing a dance and it was the most important dance for me because it was about my son, my late, my son that I lost, you know, 14 years ago. And we're doing this dance for him and every lift we did was on my right side. <laughs> so it's like the big lift that we did at the end, we rehearsed twice before we actually went and did it live which was quite scary, but they just wouldn't let me do it. Right. And it was just, I had strapping on, I was like taking diazepam to kind of relax my muscles. It was, I did everything I could to get through it. Just do. But did that, but did that like spont kind of, did, because you didn't have much time, did that make it more exciting, more at risk? Like what, what did it, did it? I suppose you, into it? Yeah, you probably were challenged in, in that respect. Yeah. Massively. And I like a challenge. Yeah. I'm all about the challenge. <laughs> yeah, everybody does. I think it puts some puts people out of their comfort zone just to you know see what they can achieve. Well, look, nothing worth having is ever easy, is it? No, not at all. You know I mean, not like you've you've got if you, if it's worth having, it's always going to be difficult. Yeah, I agree. What happened after? Um, so you started singing. Obviously, fast forward a little bit. Everyone remembers hearsay what you did. Was it pop stars? It was called at the time. Pop stars. It was like the first. Yeah, before like Britain's Got Talent, right? It was the first ever. like 
thing. It was the first thing, yeah, yeah. that was like really popular, and everyone was just like, "Wow, this I is a huge." I think it probably was that art globally as well, because yeah. obviously, like loads of countries all over the world now. Yeah, what was that like? Like the experience of that was that just like it was really weird because obviously we didn't know what we were stepping into because yeah. cause there hadn't been anything before when the initial thing came. I remember I was <laughs> so I was a single parent at the time. I was with my two kids. My little boy was watching Paddington. Mm-hmm. Fucking floor. Emily was asleep somewhere as usual. And I was ironing. I heard she's over there. <laughs> yeah. Asleep as usual. Um, and I was ironing. I remember my mum rang me and she went, you're going for an audition tomorrow. And I went, what? She went, oh, there's this thing. I've seen it on Granada Reports. They're looking for like girls and boys that can sing. And I went, mum, not, the- not doing that. She went, you are. I went, I'm not doing that. Like, do you know how many people are going to go for this competition? Like, there's no point in me going. She went, you're going. So I borrowed a friend's car. So I literally had nothing to my, I had like, didn't have two P to rub together. Like nothing, I had nothing. I was Where was the audition car. to it? Uh, so it was at, it was at Granada Studios, which weirdly was where Coronation Street was filmed. Oh wow, okay, yeah. And I, we went there and we had to queue up. I remember being in this queue. Yeah, I remember seeing the cues for stuff out of there. Yeah, it's like, just crazy. It's so yeah. embarrassing Thousands. when I watch it back. Cause they're like watching it go, um, in like filming yeah. What would it mean to you know? Yeah, yeah, I just want to be famous. And I'm like, I actually don't want to be famous. <laughs> How old were you at the time? You were like... I was 24. Oh, wow. I was 24. Okay, 24. Oh, wow. But this was absolutely my last, last chance saloon for me. Right. Like, I had lived my entire life from being 10, trying and trying and trying. And, you know, I'd sang in pubs and clubs and I'd been a session musician. I'd... I'd been a backing vocalist for certain bands and I'd done, I'd been on TV and done stuff and I had a record deal when I was 13 with a, a, a local label in Manchester. I'd been in a recording studio. I'd done everything, honestly, everything I could possibly do. And I thought, this is my last chance to live. Well, I think it's the beauty of the show itself because it's obviously giving a platform for people like yourself, for performers, actors, actresses, you know, singers, dancers to, to have that platform to be able to be like, okay, maybe we can't just find the, the right uh, performer just through an agent. You know, it's, it's, it's going down to, to different locations around the country and finding people like yourself. And it's basically stemmed your career and you basically formed a, formed a band. So that must have been... It, that's, that's crazy you felt like that at 24 because 24 is so young. Like now, you know, even if you're getting into anything now... Yeah, but I had two kids. I had two children. I had my first child when I was 18. By the time I was 21, I had two kids under 16. You know, and I, I, I was very mature, and my life was about making sure they were okay. Yeah. And at 24, you look at your life and you go, do you know what? Do I want to live this life? Do I want to live hand to mouth? Do I want to borrow things from people? Or it's actually, actually yeah. it's incredible how you've done that. And you know, I don't want to embarrass you, but by saying you know, it's it's really incredible how you've managed to, you know, you had children at a young age, but you still kept with it. And I, everyone says to me, you know would I ever want children? I say, well, if I did, it would change everything that I'm doing now. And it's such a, you know, big responsibility you have to take on. And somehow you just, it like, it, you know, it fitted into what you were doing and you grew and grew and grew with it. And obviously became, I don't know, I would say you're kind of like power a, woman. Like a, like a, like a power British woman. royal, you know, <laughs> like almost, you know, TV icon in that sense in, in, in what you ended up doing. I know you don't like compliments, but it's... <laughs> <laughs> but no. Hey, them go. Uh, 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 I really hate compliments. Keep them coming. No, but you know you have to acknowledge how incredible that is. Like to to actually and you know you've you seem like you've done it pretty much on your own, which is I, another thing. You know, I feel like so when I had my son, I was eighteen, and my dad had just had his heart. My dad had a massive heart attack, uh, and like was dead for about three minutes, and. I then found out I was pregnant and I was terrified. I remember I was terrified of telling my dad that I was pregnant because it was like, my dad was in a band years ago. He was in a band called Ricky and the Dominant. I was just going to touch on this actually. Yeah, because he actually um, was touring with, with the Beatles. Yeah, I supported the Beatles. Wow. Like, he's done some basic and they were about to get signed and then they all had a big fallout and it just didn't end up happening. So wow. dad basically, when I started singing and everything, dad was so pleased because it was like, I was taking up his dream. Right. Um, and so when I fell pregnant at 18, it was such a young age and I was really trying to be a singer and then thinking, oh God, like what's he, 
how's he going to be? And I didn't want to tell him because he just had a heart attack. Oh. I was like, I don't want him to die. Good. <laughs> yeah. Dad, I'm pregnant. Want him to see the journey. Yeah, exactly. But um, my parents have been so supportive of my career. And even then were like, you don't have to give up on this dream. Like, this is more of a reason for you to carry on. And we are here. Okay. And man, were they there. Flipping it around. They were there. Okay. They, When I got into Hearsay, they gave up their house and they moved in with me in London so that I could do what I needed to do. That's amazing. They took care of Dave and Emily. And that's why David and Emily, who are my older kids, have the relationship that they have with my parents because they are like second parents to my children. Um... And I, you can't buy that. Yeah. That I've never had to rely on like a nanny bringing a nanny in. Never. That's good. Even now, because you're keeping the family close. It's all family, and honestly, the secret to my success has been my family. Because yeah, I just couldn't have done it without them. I, I want to touch upon um, Emily's career later on in the in, in the pod, but um, talk about hearsay, and because you obviously wanted to become a, a solo artist, but now you've joined a band so how was the the, the dynamics of, of, of joining a band and what was that like it was a really unique experience because obviously there'd not been another like it so nobody knew what was happening and you bring five people completely different backgrounds with different families with different upbringings and you bring in five people together it's quite dysfunctional like there's not don't know each other yeah so we literally getting to know each other whilst living together because we had to live together in a house you know and get to know each other at the same time and tour and do this and do that. And I feel like when I was in Hearsay, everything happened in fast forward. Mm -hmm. So, you know, normal bands would like make an album and then maybe six months down the line, they might decide to do a tour. But everything that happened with us, I think because we were kind of the learning curve for what came after. So we were the, we were the testers. We were the, you know, guinea pigs, the guinea pigs, exactly that, um, for, for all the others for X Factor and everything else, you know, and I feel like nobody knew how long this was going to last. So everything happened in fast forward. So they just went, I tell you what, let's do a tour. And when we're on tour, let's record a second album. And then when you're doing that, let's do this. And it was burnout. Did it feel like a bit sporadic? There was no structure. Th there wasn't a structure. And I think because they didn't know, yeah. there wasn't a structure. There wasn't like a. Learning as you go. Yeah. It was, it literally was that. We were just, you know, a learning curve for everybody. And it got to a point where we'd been together for almost a year and I could see that the ship was sinking. And I was like... What could you sense? What were you feeling? Well, you know, we'd been criticised for doing a second album, obviously, within a year. Who brings out a second album within a year? Um, we were on everything, in everything. It was like overkill. And people were getting a little bit bored of us. And then there was news of another thing happening. And it just started, you know, the second album didn't do very well and then something else happened. And I just, I sat there and I thought, I don't want to be on a sinking ship. Like, did I really don't. Did you relay that, those feelings to the other band? I didn't, you know. And I think the way that I left the band is probably one thing that I regret because... Um, did you live first? I left first. But there was a lot of conflict yeah. at that time. There was conflict. And people will sit there and go, there wasn't any conflict. There was. Um... And we didn't feel like we could talk to each other. It wasn't, and I know I didn't, I don't, I know I can speak like for everybody when I say we didn't feel like we were supported and we didn't feel like we could talk to each other in that way. Um, but certain things happened and I just decided to make the jump. Did you, um, after that, did you think, right, I want to go solo on my own? Or did, when, when did the acting side start? No, I had no clue what I was going to do. It's crazy. I literally went, it, like, you know I'm, like I'm out and I don't know what to do. Yeah. Just wow. my first house, I had the kids, and I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do here. Like, I love those moments. Because no like, they, 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 they trigger something in your, it's like a it's like a science thing with survival instinct. When, you, when you're put in a situation where, you know, they, they relate it to like, you know, hunting hunt, hunt and gather. Yes, yeah, they, yeah literally. Yeah. That's my dad's mantra, sink yeah. or swim, Kim. Exactly. He's always said that to me, sink or swim. I, actually, weirdly, the majority of people don't, don't even don't even take the risk because they don't want to lose the the schedule or they don't want to lose their comfort. Yeah. But the people that do take the risk are the ones that normally you know veer off into something. Well, you something take the better. risk and, and it doesn't work out for you. But do you know what? I'd try. rather take the risk and try yeah. 
and sit there and go, I wonder what if would have happened if. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? What if what if is worse? Yeah. Mm. What yeah. if is worse? Yeah. Like I'd rather just go, right, I did that and it was awful. Yeah. You it's can't you can't really work. you know, you can't really fail at anything. You're you're always gonna learn. you you know, it's either it's either you win or you learn. Yeah. It, I I I don't be, I don't believe in like you don't, you know, you lose or, oh, that wasn't, because you're going to learn something from that experience. The management company that had us was like, you know, Kim, your voice is too good to not do this. So we're going to try and get you a solo deal, which they did. And I did my solo album and I did really well. I had a number two single and, uh, you know, two top 10 singles and a top 10 album, which was great. <laughs> and then they very quickly dropped me. <laughs> what was that? What was that? What, um, I was listening to one just before. It was, it was Untitled and... And something? What? Do you on your own? It was a very nice video. T tell me something single. We were watching your yeah. best bits, which is quite... What? Weird, yeah. <laughs> That's your... really weird and creepy. What's that? <laughs> this is just for you, or was it for the podcast? <laughs> quite... What was the name of the single? What was the name of the sing The two singles? Uh, so, Cry was... No, it wasn't that one. one. And then the second one was Come On Over. I think it was that one. I was Come On Over. Yeah. Was that when I was wearing that really awful helmet? <laughs> um, <laughs> they ruined the entire shoot. So it was, no, it was, it was like, Italy. It was right? Italy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was all really yeah. sexy. It was like, all very sexy. Like, and uh, it was like getting hot Italian weight, and it was like, oh. and then the next thing they put me in a skew with a helmet. Yeah. So I was like, fuck, yeah. like way to fucking ruin it. So I listened yeah. to that, and I was like, I, I remember that song, but I didn't realize you sang it. <laughs> Terrible. You <laughs> learn something new every day. I know, you? and I was listening to that, but it was a very, uh, yeah, it was a very sexy. Was, and then they released Sentimental, which Sentimental for me was probably a song they should have released earlier. Right. Because actually that was probably one of my best okay. songs, and they released it party late. But anyway, I do you know what? Do I have to... Mr. Have... Singing? No. No? No, not really. It was a very... Why? Why? Because life. you've now found the love in acting, or just yeah, because... Of course, of course that. But it's, it's also a very lonely right. life at times, I feel. It was for me. You know, I was leaving my children at home and they were like three and five at the time, you know, and I was on the road constantly and didn't have the luxury of having them there with me all the time. And I, I'm very much a family girl. And it was, and also, and this comes back to this thing again, when you're you and you're, that's me, okay? So people have to buy into me. It's about whether they like you or not. It's about what color your hair is that day. And I don't like her hair, I'm not buying that. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah, it's, it's it's that. It's, it's very personal. Yeah, yeah. It's not when you're an actor, if someone wants to employ you, it's because you're a good actor. Yeah. It doesn't really matter what they think. Yeah. Right. But when you're singing, it's very much about general That's public. And I'm a bit like Marmite. You either love me or you hate me. Oh, we love you. Uh, we just I think everyone loves you. <laughs> yeah, every Yeah, we love you all. I'm gonna uh, I've got you, Geordie. So I'm gonna challenge you on this. If you're I've, you just said it's a very lonely life, but your daughter, who's sitting at the back, big up M and E, who's got you know, I've heard some of her stuff. She's got an incredible voice yeah. and an incredible future. Gets so you, you know, what what are you gonna, or how are you gonna help make sure that she doesn't feel like it's a lonely life? If that makes sense. Well, I'm her manager at the moment. Oh, wow. Okay, so, <laughs> so you're, you're kicking ass. Uh, so she'll never be alone. Okay, alone. Good. Um, so is that some saying? Was that was that the one thing that could have been missing? If if you yes. if you was singing and and you had your mum there or someone there who was like with you the whole time supporting yeah. you and been to the been been to the industry as well, yeah. you know, going well, you don't need to do this or yes, do that. Yeah. Is that literally the simple answer? I think if I could go back and and redo it, I would make sure that I had someone with me all the time. So I feel like, for me, I'm a family girl. I don't like being alone. It's really weird. And my son's just moved out. Honestly, I feel really sad talking about this. But my son's just moved out. He's 27. He's finally moved out of the house. So it's just me and Polly. And Polly just wants to be in her room. Like, doesn't care about mom. She's just shouting out, Mom, can you have a cup of tea? And then slams the door again. You know what I mean? So it's literally me. And it's like, oh, by myself. It's literally like that. Like crying at the window. And I hate being alone. And I know that Emily hates being alone. She got that from me. But we have a very tight family. Yeah. So, I love how important family is too, because I think I think some of that stuff has got lost. Like, you know, you just see you see everything on social media now, and everything. And look, I'm kind of similar to this. You you get, you get very lost and self centered in what you're doing. I need to do this. I need to do that. And you know, it's almost like family becomes second. I'm trying to spend a lot more time with my mum at the moment and and family as well. But it's like how 
how do you balance that out with obviously the career and all that demand as well of what like you know you must be having people dragging you here trying to do this kim do you want to do that let's go here and it's like it's really honorable that like your family is still so important to you and it's like no family first and this is second family first always yeah. like it, it, it's always that way well, with me emily's also your best friend so it's always yeah. like amazing that she's um, got you to to support her, given the guidance that she needs for her own career. So, what's uh, we were talking about this yesterday as well, weren't we? About how you know she's seen your hard graft and what it takes to to get to the top, but not just get to the top. It's it's stay at the top, maintain it, and maintain that that position. So it's it's nice for Emily to have you as as a manager, a, a support system, a, a guide into sort of where you made the mistakes in life. Um, and, and and look at sort of the channel you and the film industry. <laughs> <laughs> and he's going to throw somewhere. He's, he's the owner of the industry, and I'm saying, Jay, just 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 listen to. I could I could speed up uh, he, he, ten his, years his ego, mistakes his and things ego. I made. Just listen to it. And because he's older than me, he doesn't. You know, <laughs> anyone that's older than you doesn't like listening, even if you're right. Uh, you know, they just go, No, you. Well, I don't want to listen to. Yeah, you. I don't listen to <laughs> you younger. So you should be able to you guys as big as I think I think she's you know, she is my best friend. I think that was you know, having children really young, whilst I'm not gonna sit there and go, Hey everyone, go and have a kid at eighteen, you know, I would never do that because it's what's right for you. Um I obviously didn't plan to have my children that young, but I did. And it wasn't easy and it was difficult and it was a struggle. But I am so grateful for my children because Emily and David are literally like my best friends. They are my right arm. I, I can rely on them for everything. They help me with Polly. They help me now with my career. So if I'm doing something, they'll have her overnight. Emily's Emily's got a room in her house for Polly, you know, and is the big sister that Polly needs to have, you know, but she's also my best friend yeah. and I can tell her anything. And she's, you know, she's not, she's just always there for me as is, as is David. You know, and, and hopefully, you know, and what's great for me is now I'm a grandma, like, or a yaya, as my <laughs> my my kid, my grandchildren call me yaya, because I had a bit of a meltdown about being a grandma, and I was 43, and I, I sat with Emily while she took her pregnancy test. She was sitting on the toilet. <laughs> we used to live in this little house, right? So we the plan was we bought this house and we we're going to renovate this house. <laughs> it never happened. She's like, what are you saying, mum? It had this really weird kind of toilet, didn't it, Emily, where he had to walk down. It was almost like part of a cellar. Yeah, so he walked down these three stairs and there was like the toilet. So I was sitting on these steps and she sat on the toilet. He's doing this thing. So she was shaking like this. <laughs> she shook herself off the toilet. She was so scared. And she did it and she went, I can't look, I can't look. And I took it like that. And she looked at me and I just looked right into her belly and went, <laughs> oh, that. And she was like, "That's so like, cool." Such like, a shock for her, but she was twenty-one, and I was twenty-one when I fell pregnant with her. Gosh, that's such a fun oh, story. Yeah. That's like that's like really like that is proper best mates. That's like you know yeah. sitting sitting on the toilet together. She casually yeah. told me, "I think I might be pregnant." She was doing my nails because she's a beautician <laughs> as well. She was casually doing my nails the same. She went, "Yeah, I've not had my period," and I went, "What?" <laughs> yeah, casually put that. Out. Excuse me. Uh, stop. She, I went. How long? She went about three weeks. I went. Pardon? I was literally like having this conversation. She went, and then she went, yeah, but you come to the shop with me and buy this thing. I went, well, I can't buy it. If I go to the shop and buy a pregnancy test, it's all over the news, Kim Marsh buys things. I was like, I don't need that. But I went with her and then we did it that night. And it was, you know, and then I was her birthing partner. I was there at the birth of my first grandson. It's so good to have that relate, like to have that relationship. It's really, it's, 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 I, I spent a bit, I went up and saw um, Eddie Hall recently and he's with his son the whole time and his son is his best mate, his son is 10 and they are best mates, like it was just, you know, we picked him up from school, he was like, look, we do this thing every day, I pick him up from school, we go and get a LucasAid bowl, um, a scratch card and a chocolate bar and then we go to gym. Gambling early. I know, <laughs> get him in. Get gambling. Get him in. And on the uh, LucasAid. And it's like, yeah, it's, it was such a, it was the first time because I, I want to ask you as well, like your, your advice for people that may or may not want to have children, because every time like I just flip, I'm like, at one point I'm doing this, I know I'm like, right, no children. I never used to want children at all. And then I'm like, I see relationships like with him or I listen to you talking about your relationship got, with your daughter. You've got no friends. So <laughs> no, but, got commitment issues. No, but no, it's not. It's not about the commitment Let's talk issues. About you. <laughs> it's about. Um, it's just about. 
I don't know. It's just flipping it back and forth. And I think you're right in a way. There is a there is a lonely aspect to the to the industry. What is it about kids? I don't, know. Who... It's just, I don't know. You tell me. Is is it, do you advise people to have kids or not? Is it is it the unknown? Is it is it that you've got you're responsible for someone else and you can't be responsible for yourself? <laughs> it's about leaving your. I say it's about leaving a legacy for and, and continuing the family name and. No, you're looking just... after somebody that you. No, it's about someone that's going to wipe your ass when you're old. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's what it is. Someone looks after. Like, that's a real way to put it. I, suppose, I, yeah. jo- I joke with my kids and go, right, which one of you is going to wipe my ass? That one, Bob. We're bringing you in a home. They're like, no, <laughs> she's going straight in a home. <laughs> the, re- the real Kim coming in. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. No, Never not. done a podcast before. <laughs> no. Twenty minutes here. Talking about wiping. Uh, ass. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> Would you advise, okay, would you advise, like, what's your advice to people? If someone's at home now going, right, I don't know, 50 50 career. You can have kids and you can have a career. It's just about managing it. Well, Emily's doing it herself. She is. She is, and she's doing it really well. I think, I think the thing is, look, there's a million reasons not to have children. Right. There's a million reasons to have them. There's never a right time to have a kid. Yeah. Ever. Never a wrong time. There's never a point where, and I don't know anybody who is married or not married or whatever, who've got kids that went, let's have a kid, it's the right time. There's yeah. never a right time because they will turn your life upside down. It doesn't matter whether you're yeah. successful, whether you're on your ass. It doesn't matter. They will turn your life upside down, but man, it's a ride. It's honestly, I wouldn't change. I wouldn't give my life up for anybody. Like, I love what I've got. And I went on and had Polly when I was, <laughs> when I was 34. All my friends were like, are you mad? Your kids are 14 and 60. Like, why are you doing it again? Yeah. Well, because, yeah. you know, because I wanted, because I'd been so young when I had the other two. But you felt like you accomplished something within your career uh, yeah. before that as well. So it felt like. I did. Yeah. I've, I've, I've had both. I've been very lucky. And that's not to say there are people out there that struggle. There are. Because when you've got kids, of course, that is a massive responsibility and you cannot. That is a huge responsibility and they have to become your life. Yeah. It's, it's the only thing, that's why I say it's the only thing that would really, really, like, I think it's the only thing that people look at and go, right, yeah, you have to change, be, not change, but you're responsible for someone else breathing. Uh, yeah, I mean, my husband's in the army and he's got, he's got a daughter. She's right almost, well, no, she's eight now. She's just turned eight. Um, and he's always been, you know, uh, it's real struggle for him because he's been away for half of her life because obviously he's in the army, so he's away and everything. Uh, and when we met, he was like, uh, I don't know where you're at, but I don't want any more kids. And I went, it's fine for me. And so, you know, I'm considerably older than him. He's like 35 and I'm 46. I was like, yeah, I'm not really, it's not really where I'm at. Um, and he was fine with that because he's got his own child. And he was, you know, if he, he said, if I went on to have another child, it would be irresponsible of me. Because actually, I don't see the child that I've got. Right, yeah. If I went on and had another one. So you have to think about the child you know, and what life you're bringing him into. Yeah, yeah. But you know what I love is... My grandchildren. Yeah. My grandchildren are my entire life now. That's and it's funny because when everyone said to me, when you have grandchildren, it's different. It so is different. Really? It's not that you love them more. <laughs> <laughs> but you love them more. <laughs> but you love them more. No, you get you get all the good bits. Yeah. yeah. I, and then you get to go, yeah. there you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Say goodbye. Age, yeah. Really. Yeah. So to have grandchildren, you have to have children. That's true. That's true. Yeah. He's got to start from somewhere. There we go. I would be without mine. I've got my grandson tonight, and I cannot wait. It's so how um, I was going to was I was going to say we can't have Kim Marsh on on the show and not ask about Strictly, and I really want to ask about that whole experience because I I used to be a dancer. I loved it. I loved performing. What was that like for you? It was intense, you know. Yeah, it was really intense. And I thought, um, I hate live TV. I can't stand it. Like it really gives me. Gives me anxiety. <laughs> like, I'm a little anxiety. bit lost on this. So, so I know strictly, strictly come dancing, and I and I know how popular it is because everyone loves I don't it. Watch any. But I don't watch. I don't watch TV. <laughs> and I don't like to look at the news. But I didn't know it was live. I I thought. Yeah, live. So you you learn a you learn a performance. Yeah. You learn a dance, yeah. and then you go and perform it live yeah. for, a, for a week. One yeah. like, Friday yeah. or Saturday night. So you you have literally so you've got a week to learn a dance, oh. and have it. Down. And then the next week you got to learn something else. And then you got to learn something else. And what's it, like uh, two minutes? It's two minutes of a dance. So that's, that is it's quite a long time. That was a long time. And when you're not, you know, I'm not really done. I mean, I got by, I fudged my way through here, say, so, you know what I mean? I wasn't, I wasn't a dance. And actually, even if you, even if you did have dance experience, yeah, 
it's not the same as like let's do a waltz now uh, and i was terrible at ballroom because yeah. my shoulders go like that straight away my shoulders <laughs> are up and they're like my shoulders i was like i can't help it i'm really nervous i'm not should have used that brace that you need. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Shoulders down, shoulders down, shoulders down, shoulders down. And as soon as we went on, I was like. Do you have moments there where you're just dancing and then you get kind of like, it, you miss it or you're just like, oh, I've, I've got a bit of an urge to dance. Because now you can dance, obviously. No, not really. I mean, I, I really enjoyed it. Oh, my God. I was at my thinnest when I was doing that. And I was like, so fit. Because you're dancing yeah. for. It, don't they get that? So they get like really. Get, they get like really professional, you know, like the best dancers in the world, right? From all these different. Yeah, so I was I was coupled with Graziano, who I was very privileged to to be dancing with. He's he's now become one of my best friends and sort of the so. top things you've been doing together. Yeah, so much- I I love him. I was very fortunate to have him. That's not to say that we didn't have some argument. Oh, cool. He's a very passionate Italian guy. Sure. Who's, once you do it right, when you do it right, they do this thing, and I went, "Don't shout at me." Do you not shout at me? Go and stand in that corner and think about what you've done. <laughs> but I'll do it literally. It's true. It's literally that. He's a, he's a professional. If you shout at me, I will walk out that door yeah. right now. That's so up to you. Yeah. Shout. It's almost like, you know, having a second husband. Yes. Yeah. Without the sex. <laughs> <laughs> but you're getting close enough. <laughs> yeah. And we talked about the Strictly Curse. Oh, my God, I've heard Strictly Curse. I, every time I posted a photo, it was like, oh, Strictly Curse. You know, he's like, he's as old as my son. Like, do you know what I mean? And there was nothing at all you can't look at sexual it. between yeah. me and Graziano at all. But, you know, from the outside looking in, because you're so close, everyone goes, oh, something's happening. Right, right. It really wasn't. Well, the, did... the themes that they choose, right? So if they, if someone wants to do like a, a love theme or a romantic theme one week and then it's like a, you, you know, an 80s be... theme, yeah, you have to. You're... You have to be that close. Like when we did Argentine Tango, which, by the way, was one of my best dances, and actually, I only had 14 hours to learn that dance. So the one but, you were all in black? Yeah. we saw? Yeah. It was... You were great. Incredible. Yeah. I loved it. Every second of it. Yeah. I just really connected with it. For me, Latin dances were my thing. It wasn't about ballroom, not about waltzing and all yeah. that. I'm definitely not... I'm the most ungraceful person ever. Well, what can you want to sit? express yourself? You felt like... I'm too much of a ninja. That, <laughs> that. that genre and that style of... That style of you know, that for me was very, very expressive. But I, but I feel like that's part, partly acting, no? Yeah. Like when you, you know, when you can feel like you can get into that yeah. role. Yeah. That's why I loved, I loved, uh, I loved the rumba. I loved that because yeah. I was able to get into this. And actually, something we, clearly. We're probably doing Argentine tango. There was just me and him. Yeah. And I had to look at him in a certain way. I had to pretend that this was the, you know, and that was probably why the connection was really good at that point. How weird is that? With it's rooted into what you said at the beginning when you were younger that you were like. You didn't want to be Kim. You were trying to do something right. else. It's right. Yeah. All of the dances that I did on that show where I couldn't make a connection with a character were shit. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they, were, they were just like below par. Yeah. But you've got to feel it. You know, if you feel it, it it, be, it, be, it becomes, you know, it, it's, it becomes natural. It becomes organic. It becomes inside you. I remember listening to Michael Caine talking about, you know, the moments that he felt really connected to his characters were when he felt it in his stomach came up and that came up into his posture and his body and, and then that just poured out and it's like I love those challenges yeah I love those that's why I did Fatal Attraction on stage last year um I left Cory and the reason I left Cory was because I felt that it wasn't challenging me I, like my character became Arguments. almost like myself no but it, <laughs> but I could I could play a stand on my head yeah. yeah and I need a challenge I always need a challenge sure. and it wasn't really we were I... watching the um, best moments oh, yeah. before, and it's yeah. so weird. It's, I mean, look, you you are you know not you are you are multi talented and you are a, a brilliant actress as well. The funny thing was that most of it was just like kiss- arguing. There was no it's all oh. kissing scenes. Like it was like okay, there's a snog. Okay, there's another snog, and then it was like I swear I've read uh, somewhere, that and I was just thinking it down for like the 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 best kiss on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> is that is that? Is that a thing? Is that is that what's been? Is that what you've been late? Why are you covering your mouth for, Kim? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is, is there like is not to put you on the spot, but was that like this could be something fun in that? Like if you're if you're going through a a TV show where like I don't I don't know the storyline, so you have to help me here. But there was loads of like kissing moments, and I'm looking at these guys. I'm looking at these guys. Off with the fella. Looking at these guys going, okay, there's one, there's another one. Was there like? I don't want to put you on the spot. Was there like a was there like a moment that was best for you? Not not like that you. <laughs> best. Is there a best on screen kiss? Is there a best on screen kiss? Yeah, <laughs> they're all uncomfortable. They are uncomfortable. Um, 
people don't realize do they like i can ask like 20 people yeah there's like learn to be on the rain it's like this it's yeah. so no it's part yeah really i think the funny i think the one that made me laugh the most was when i had to kiss keith duffy who's that? So i was he, who's keith duffy he's from boy's own okay wow you really are out of touch which, wow. which one for boy's own he's very attractive irish man so you need to. That's not, that's not uh, but basic, basically, it's not Ronan Keaton. Basic, no, it's not Ronan Keaton. I'm sorry, it's the right man, but it's. Um... I'm, you know, I'm of a different generation. <laughs> Ancient like you two. Well, anyway. <laughs> <I'm joking. laughs> Actually, I'm, I'm gonna punch you. You're, you are. You're more fun <laughs> you than run. You're more fun than me. You are younger than me. Yeah, I'm Kim and on Kari yeah. coming out. Kim on no, Kari. Run away very fast. We mentioned, we mentioned Kari and then his uh, his post. Yeah, but uh, when I I so I played his girlfriend in Kari for a little while, and all the women of my age who were like, "Oh my God, you get to kiss kiss Keith Duffy," and I was like, well, "I don't really right. kissing his character. It's yeah. not the same." Yeah. Right. You. I talk whenever I'm. I don't know about you. Whenever I'm playing a role, I talk them I talk about it as the third person. So I say her, she. I talk to Emily about it. And I go, yeah, and she did this. And like, I don't go, I did this. Yeah. I don't go, I've yeah. just done this. I go, yeah, she's done that. Which is like my way to to present. Yeah, yeah you remove yourself because you are playing that character, and a lot of actors, you know, do that when they're being interviewed. They're saying, yeah, this, this character was. I do do that, but it changes per role. Depends who you're kissing. No, no. <laughs> not, the, not, not the kissing a character yeah it does don't it's like the character. it's getting it no but like you know this i've i've done a couple of kissing scenes and they've all been okay go on who really. it go no not not like anything crazy but it's just it's just it's just the way that some he just know, kissed mongols i read <laughs> I, re I remember i had to do one kissing scene and, and the, the girl had just never done it and it was just like you know had to help her feel comfortable and stuff like that and then you know you do. I've done. I've done another kiss scene where the girl got really like, like, oh wow, this like, should we do something after this? I was like, no, this is just work. this is just work. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's weird. Yeah, weird. <laughs> that's weird. So was she a professional? No, no, she did the work, but it was just like so. It's but I feel comfortable doing it. And it's like it, you have to be able it, to separate yourself. Of course, yeah. You know, yeah. Otherwise, you'd just be cheating on people. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> just yeah. Just it's a word. Just be like throw the lips live cheating for people, <laughs> and everyone gets to see it. Um, yeah. But what was like? What was the best moments for you and Corey? Because I know that you know, it's the it's it's dubbed like the the creme of you know um, mm -hmm. soap in TV in the UK. Not that I'm, not that I'm My any lips expert. Lips are the creme de la. <laughs> <laughs> You've made that, up. Um, but they are. Um, <laughs> uh, was it great? Like, was it a great experience? I had a great experience. Yeah. I learned a lot along the way. They gave me my opportunity. They took a chance on me. You know, I'd just come out of a music career. I wasn't really known for that. I'd done the odd bit here and there. And they took a massive chance on me. And I was grateful for that opportunity and I ran with it. Um, I think, you know, I was there for almost 14 years. Originally, I went in for three episodes. I should have just been there for three episodes. And then I was there for 14 years. That's a, that's a testament to, like, you know, within within our industry, it's, always, it's, it's most of the time it's about how nice the person is to work with. You know, I've worked with some amazing people and they've been absolute you know, knobs that I wouldn't work with again. Doesn't matter how famous they are. And it's like I always say this, if you if you hide in as a job that's like three episodes and you end up doing fourteen years, you know, you yeah. You, it means you're great to work I with. Think something like, right, I think, you yeah, know, I and, and 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 I, you know, I I loved my time there. I think my proudest moment was probably uh they did a whole baby loss storyline and I lost my son fourteen years ago in the same way, pretty much the same way that we decided to. So they came to me and said, Kim, we we want to do a Baby Lost storyline uh, and we want you to play it. And obviously we know this is really close to home because it was a, what they call a late miscarriage, which I hate, I hate that term by the way, because I gave birth to my son, it wasn't miscarriage. But that's the terminology. They wanted to do a late miscarriage. Uh, will you play its part? And I sat was there. They built it around. Did you think they, they thought of you first? They they did, and they came to me and said, "Look, if you say no, we won't play the story. We won't play it with anyone else." But we also know how much they knew how much I did to try and um, raise awareness for baby loss because baby loss is something that people don't talk about ever. It's a taboo subject. No one wants to talk about a dead baby. No one wants to talk about it. It's it's uncomfortable, and people don't know what to say. And I experienced it myself. Like my friends didn't know what to say to me. Yeah. Um. And I try and get people to talk about it and try and get that discussion going. 
and they know that I've always kind of been a big advocate and they came to me and said will you do this and like, go away and think about it and I went away and spoke to my mum and mum said what are you feeling I said well my gut instinct is to say yes because I feel like we are only going to do good by doing this and I feel like soaps are brilliant for that because what they do is they project really important subject matter into people's living rooms with and educate people without them actually knowing they're being educated Yeah, because okay. they're talking about stuff whether it's you know male suicide whatever that is and I felt like this was a really good opportunity and I did it and um, what I loved about it was I said if you're going to do this you're going to use me as a subject matter because I know that they talk to people and they go and have conversations with people at Boss Babies. I said, I will talk to okay, people. So you were, you were the research angle? I was the research. And I said, I will speak to you about the death of my son. I will tell you everything about the death of my son. You have to play this as I want it. You can't, you can't shy away from it. You have to be real. If we're going to do the story, we're going to do it in its entirety. We're going to tell the story. Yeah. And they did. And it was one of the most impactful, emotional things that... Mm. You know, and when it actually happened, I mean, it was difficult for me because I, and they got me counselling. They said, you know, what do you need? And I said, I don't know. I don't know what I need because I've spent years trying to get away from this. And I don't know what's in the box until I lift the lid. Yeah, so I, I don't know. You're literally, you know, and I, I'm, o- I'm opening the lid now and I'm going, this is what I'm doing. And I'm putting myself back in. So I had to give birth to the baby. I had to, and it was, it You're was. reliving. I relived. Yeah. Yes. When it when it happened, did you did you kind of block it out and, and not shy away, but did you block it out and then this this storyline was the first time you really went back into it or what like There was a long period of time after I lost my son that I I didn't deal with it very well. You know, in the first certainly for the first three or four months. Well you said you trouble both of it. I, I, I kept myself away, I didn't want to talk to anyone, you know, even my own children, you know, it was Emily that actually pulled me out of myself because she just kept, I was literally would lie on my bed and I didn't want to talk to anyone and she came in she came into me one day and this was this was the turning point she came into me one day she put her arms she lay on the bed next to me she put her arms on me and she said yeah I really need to talk to you about something and I was like what am I doing you know this kid needs me I'm still needed I'm not you know and it and it really just snapped me out of it it was it was one of those moments and actually talking about my experience is the one thing that pulled me through it and I feel like by doing the storyline in Coronation Street, it got people talking. And it's important to talk about it because it, it is the one thing that gets you through. I think for me, when I went in and did this story, it was quite brief because it could have gone either way. And I didn't know, you know, I didn't know what was going to happen. And I had to give birth to the baby and I had to do the whole thing. And actually, in the scene where Michelle gives birth, um, there is a baby that they bring over. And I said, I don't want to see the jelly. They call it the jelly baby because it's like a... It feels like jelly, but it's like a prosthetic baby. And I said, that was the right size, but same size. I said, I don't want to see it until the take. Don't show me that baby till the take. Because I wanted like a, a real reaction. So we did it with like a doll, like a Tiny Tears doll first. And then on the take, it was one take. And when I remember when they turned that baby around, I just went... <gasps> like, that was the one moment that I went... It, it just... Really- oh, this is... This is... Like too real, and they'd put this little blue bob hat on. Just take you straight back. Which my son had a blue bob hat, on. and I literally just went, and we did the whole take, and they shouted cut, and I went, take it away, take it away, take it away, take it away, and they, that was the one time, the only time that I, managed, I went back. Yeah. The rest of the time, I was able to just go separate myself. So that's such a testament though to how strong and like brave you are to to even just go to that place again. You know, it's just it's. But it's an important story to tell. But you're right. There are millions of people yeah. that are going through this what, every day. Um, it's it's a powerful thing because you're using that your platform to to raise awareness and you're you're going through the emotions, uh, reliving it again. But uh, you you've also you know found the resources to to look at counselling as you were as you were doing this. And I think that's so important for people that are going through struggles and and mental health and 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 it's such a huge thing right now. And like just yeah, talking about it as us to help. The best thing you can do is just not bottle anything up, no. and it's just talk to somebody about it, whether yeah. it and whether it's not like a family member or your best friend. It it, it can be someone just outside of your Anyone. circle yeah. because you can just really just under they can just just you can just offload. And the other thing is those, those the other thing that is, pay. is listen. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? If you're not the person going through it, just listen to someone. Yeah. I just, I would have loved someone to just listen and go, go on, Kim, tell me. Yeah. But 
people find it difficult because they often don't know what to say. And that can be in any situation, it can be whether you've got mental health or, or whether it's about baby loss or whatever it is, and people feel uncomfortable and they don't quite know what to say. Don't say anything. So don't have to say anything. Same. Just yeah. listen to me. Yeah. yeah. You know? What um if you don't mind me asking then, what so what actually happened? You you like with your real life, you gave birth and then the baby mm -hmm. passed away. Oh no. What so actually, um what actually So happened? I was almost twenty two weeks pregnant. Okay. And then something was wrong. There was something going on. I didn't know what it was, thought I had a bit of an infection, went into hospital. And they examined me, and I will never forget the look on the nurse's face. So there was two nurses in the room, examined me, and they both went Pfft, to each other. And I went, what? What's going on? And they went, I have to get the consultant. The consultant came in. She said, uh, so you have gone into labor without me knowing. Because uh, before 22 weeks, you don't feel uh, contractions. It's not a thing. And what's the week you're supposed to go into labor? 40. Wow. So uh, I didn't know. And they were like, he's, he's actually hanging out like he's he's coming he's he's in his he's there we can see his head and i was like wow so you have no like no, no I should, like a reaction from your body to tell you that something... no idea no wow. nothing all, all it was was i was like, like a bit of fluid or something i was like i don't know what this is anyway so they said best chance is that we can take you into theater now we can push him back we can put a stitch into the neck of your womb and hope for the best but if an infection has got in your waters will break, and if your waters break, there's nothing we can do. So that was it. I remember them pressing on my throat as they were putting me under because I'd had a cup of tea and they didn't want me to be sick. So they were like pressing on my throat to stop me vomiting while they would put me under. And the next thing I woke up and my head was, my feet were higher than my head on this bed because they wanted like gravity. They wanted to take away gravity. Right. And they wouldn't let me get out of bed to go to the toilet or anything like that. And then about eight hours later, they let me up to go to the loo and I got back in bed. And I was just talking away to someone and all of a sudden, shh, and my water's just broke. And at that moment, it was like, this is, this is not ending well here. Like we, we're losing him. Um, and my whole world just like fell apart in that moment. It was just gone. There was nothing because I knew. And then I spent the next 24, 32 hours, um, in a very slow labor. And they're coming in, listening to his heartbeat, and I was like, "Please, please stop," because he, because he was, he was fine. He was kicking away, no problems, kicking me, kicking me, kicking me, thinking he's fine. But I knew that as soon as he was born, he was going to die, because they wouldn't try and resuscitate him because he was too early. Yes. Yeah, so the reason he died is because he was born. So I then had massive guilt. It was like, I still feel guilty. Still feel guilty. It's not my fault. I know it's, it's not, not your fault. And that's an incredible. Well, to me, my body let me down. It let him down. You know why? For what reason? And then you know, I then went on to have Polly and was being monitored from twelve weeks. And the same thing was going to happen to her had I not been being monitored. For some reason, my body between having Emily and Archie just went no, don't want to do it anymore. I'm done. Well, after twenty two weeks of giving birth to a premature baby like that. Uh, what's the success rate? There can't be much of a success rate in that Not in that me. condition. Well, he was so he, he was on really blame yourself. No, he was under twenty two weeks, and actually, if he'd survived, his quality of life would have been dreadful. But yeah. selfishly, you sit there and go, "Oh well, you know." But I think anyone that loses a child, you know, will tell you it doesn't matter what stage you lose a child, whether it's before twelve weeks, whatever it is, it's still your baby, and yeah. We were lucky enough to have held him. We were lucky enough to have a funeral. We were lucky enough to have spent some time with him, you know, and... That's beautiful. I feel like lots of people don't get that, and we did, and I felt really lucky for that. And actually, all it does is, for me, it could have broken me, but actually all it did was make me stronger. I was going to say, it sounded like it made you more yeah. stronger, resilient, like I'd just, yeah. My children, yeah. I would give my life for any of my children sure. right now, sure. and my grandchildren, yeah. actually. You know, and it just makes you appreciate what you've got. Yeah. What did, um, so reliving it, last question on it, reliving it through the storyline on Corey, what, if you could think of, if you can pick one single thing that did for you, what did it do for you? What, Coronation Street? No, the, the reliving that storyline. Maybe not. Yeah, in relation to that. I did did, it, did you just have like a sense of, okay, like, I'm glad I, re I'm glad I sort of. I think I realized that I have accepted what happened to me. Oh, yeah. And that was the thing was that the counsellor would speak to me every day to bring me back and go, right, okay, let's do a session afterwards and we'd be here and now and afterwards. 
he was crying during one of the scenes that we did. And I came off and I was like, you okay, Bill? And he was like, yeah, he was, he just said, I just think you're a really strong lady, like, you know, to do this and to try and, and I wanted to do it simply to help other people. It was just about getting people to talk. And um, afterwards, after we'd finished, he said to me, you know something? He said, I think when we started this, you said to me, I don't know if I've dealt with my son's death. And he said, I absolutely think you have. He said, you have accepted what has happened to you. Yeah. You'll never get over it, but it's about accepting. It's acceptance in anything, anything that happens to you in life. As soon as you accept it, you can move on. And, you know, I do move on. And there's that's not to say that there are days when I'm a mess, you know, it, you know, his birthday is just, just being. And we celebrate his birthday every year. We do things, we set off balloons, we have a party for him. You know, we, we abs he is absolutely a massive part of our life. Polly knows about him. Polly is, that's my big brother. You know, we talk about him all the time and I think that's really important. I think that you've just got to learn to accept it and know that actually, it, and especially if you start talking to people and sharing your story, it means that you're helping. Someone. There's a healing process with that, you, you know, like yeah. you just said. So. I can't, believe, I can't believe how strong, honestly, you're, you're so impressive how strong you are. <laughs> Let alone stronger than most women, stronger than most men, like the, the resilience of it and, and being able to then have like, you know, a really successful career where like, you know, the whole nation's watching you or, oh, you know, you're, you're here, you're there. It's like. But sometimes, you know, it's like, it does. Sometimes it gets to you. Of course. So sometimes I'm a mess. Like sometimes I'm a mess. And also. I'm sat here now. First thing I'm going to do when I go home is put my pajamas on. <laughs> I wanted to be in pajamas. I, I, said, to, I said to you, this, I said to you, can I be in like sweatpants? You're like, no. Um, I think, honestly, feel like everyone thinks this life is so glamorous, don't they? Yeah. Everyone yeah. looks at you and goes, oh, you're yeah. in a film. They don't realize. This is so glamorous. It really isn't. Because all I do when I go home is pull my eyelashes off. I get my feet chased on. I can't wait. It's yeah. the first thing I want to do. It's such a hustle and hustle. And yeah. then like, it, the, the, the hustle and bustle of it is just crazy and also then like yeah it's just switching off that I'm, I'm, I'm like you now I'm just like oh no event no just go home get, get into <laughs> get into some sort of the crazy we go to like award ceremonies and you know you spend months looking for the dress it's like you're on the carpet ah. We should, as soon we should, as I can get out of there, I'm in the bump pajamas in the hotel. We should all go to one and just and just like just all rock up in like beach pajamas with pajamas. Because if you want to go to onesie, onesie. Yeah. a nudie, yeah. I think we're gonna look like Teddy Tubby. If, if there's more than one of you that's dressed like that, they can't tell you all from your home. If there was one, they'd be like, "Look, no, yeah, Kim, you're a bit underdressed, but if there's all of us, it'd be fine." I just do it. I would care. Yeah. How are you? Um, how's your social media? How are you dealing with social media? Are you are you quite active on it? Do you like it? What's your thoughts? I do not like it. I feel like I feel like social media. I'm I'm so glad I didn't grow up in this era. Yeah, it's, it's just crazy. It just overtakes. I mean, my 11 year old is obsessed with social media. Yeah. It's like I don't get it. I try and get her off it as much as possible because it's poisonous. The 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 flicking and the and the 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 you know we don't even know this yet, but the scientific thing it's doing to your brain where yeah. you're like. This and that. It's, it's little hips. We were talking. Me. We were yeah. talking about this the other day. Like it's yeah. actually, you know, the people that it's making people want and expect something very quickly, and people, yeah. you know, going back to actually working for something hard yeah. takes time and grass. So there's stuff that's on there. The content is like, yeah. do this, and this is gonna have my like my daughter goes, oh mom, guess what? If you do this, this happens. Yeah, I'm like, it doesn't. Yeah. It does not. Oh, it doesn't work. If you leave your hair and you don't wash it for four days, it goes back to normal. No, it doesn't. They just try and get out of having a shower. It's literally just get in the shower now and wash your hair. It's literally that. Yeah. But you, it's a little life hack. Because you're not thinking you through life. I don't think if you use it the right way, it's kind of educational Obviously, information, following the right people. I think, I would say. Following cool people. I would yeah. say, yeah. I would say <laughs> the online world is a weird and wonderful place. It can be amazing. Don't get me wrong, it's wonderful. And yes, we all use it as a tool, yeah. don't we? I do, you do, yeah. and yeah. you're always active. No, you're wrong. <laughs> it's just a tool. <laughs> oh, it's a tool, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Correct. Massive. No, it's a massive <laughs> tool. <laughs> it's like, what is happening? Why, what, what, what's going on? It's getting back. I use it. I, I, I'm either extreme with it or I'm dead with it. I came off it for like a year. I was extreme with it or dead with it. So I'm interested. You must have had like, you must have had some like funny things so, i so, get very yeah. strange things like, sent to me you know very i'll tell you why i know why because you're you know i'm gonna say this you're beautiful you're successful 
you're attractive and you apl- you you appeal to you know you appeal to your generation Shucks. you appeal to the, <laughs> the previous generation. generation yeah and probably the older generation as well so what you must have like i appeal to very strange men <laughs> so I'm just coming out it's your talking yeah, you're like <laughs> you're like i appeal to very strange men no i have you had anything which just made you laugh i'm like oh my god this this like is the so, pinnacle so there's been this whole thing hasn't there where like emily atak came out and said that she's had you know Videos of men masturbating, blah, blah, blah. I get that all the time. It's one of those things. Please stop, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, stop showing your todger, Matt. Please stop, it's embarrassing. I don't know what um, No, but you get things like that. And to a degree, you go, oh, yeah, but... And you kind of accept it, which you shouldn't, because it's absolutely not okay. Yeah, yeah. I can't imagine a time where I would take a video of myself doing something like that and send it to you. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's... It would be very weird. It's like, what do you want me to do with that? I don't... I don't really know what you want me to do now. Like, is that what you say? Is that what you say to me? No, but I don't say anything. I just ignore it. But I do have this one person that keeps messaging me, asking me to sell them my socks. God. <laughs> it's quite... I've got all the smell. Sell me, sell me it's your it's socks. Hilarious. But they have to be socks that I've worn all day. That's just hilarious. Well, just... And also God. pictures of my feet. Wow. That's like a weird foot fetish. And what he's going to put in the sock. And <laughs> smell. Smelling it. Oh, God, what? I, I, I said to you, you should just send him like a, you should, you should say, look, I want 10 grand. <laughs> and send him like a really no, good kiss. My, my son said to me, mum, ask him how much. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go out, I'll paint his toenails and send a picture. You send some baby socks. See how he has his app. Well, take a picture of your feet now. Or send it to yeah. I think it's fine. Or the hairy toes. Okay, James, James's feet. James, <laughs> James has left socks. Well, he's constantly got his feet out. He's hoping for someone to ask. You know on that picture, you know you walked outside in the cold when we went, met mine Jesus. with the feet on. And mine came out. He came out like all dressed really smart. And he's like... Is that that? <laughs> What's this all? I met him. He's huge. Yeah. That's it. The score. Yeah. Big guy. Quite... So you've had you've had a smelly you've had well, smelly. Foot <laughs> I'm not saying your feet smell. You've had foot face. Smell. You can smell them if you like. Then it'll smell. That's why we're really. <laughs> that's, that's a very odd, <laughs> very odd conversation. This is your foot face. You're, you're like wait there, wait there. It's it's a new guy. Guy. He's putting two and two together now. <laughs> when you when you van and it's when you leave, if you can leave your socks, that'll be fine. <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> um, we found it. What what's um what's next for you? What's like what, what are you looking forward to? Is there anything you can say this exciting or like or what do you um, what, forget like what you forget what's lined up what do you want to do like what's like what's kim marsh is like so i've only done one film dream i've only done one film i did a i did a independent film with uh luke goffs a couple of years ago joan collins which i loved i'd love to do a bit more film okay um, and i'd love to do more theater yeah because i got to play the bunny boiler in fatal attraction last year which i which do you prefer th- th- uh, film or theater I love them both equally, different reasons. Yeah, so mm. yeah. Um, I love stage because it means that you get that instant kind of. Crash of the Kelly you know. And I'm so excited about Emily's career because I feel like yeah. she's about to go on this journey now that is, it's going to change her life completely for many reasons. But she's going to love it. Well, tell us about the tour. You're you're going away. For, yeah, we're for gonna we're gonna do a show together yeah. for three months, which is going to be brilliant. That's amazing. So you're juggling, you know, you're juggling your daughter's sort of career, managing, helping her. You've got your family on the side, got your acting career. You've got like, you know, you're doing all these things. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. And I think you have time to sit home alone in your pants, to be honest. Because... <laughs> <laughs> I have moments, but I, I'm now at a point where I'm doing stuff in my career. My career is great. I'm really enjoying myself. I'm, you know hopefully go on and do other things. But what's brilliant for me is to watch my daughter now taking off. Because yeah. this has been a long time coming and she's finally getting her break. And I'm watching her and I'm so proud. And I can't tell you how proud I am of her. She's just an exceptional talent and it's about time that people... Yeah, we've heard her voice. I, I said it's a little bit like Adele with, mixed with, with the Ellie, big, Ellie Amy Golden. Yeah. 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 I said Amy Winehouse and a bit of Adele. It's just like that powerful, raspy type... Yeah. Yeah. You would voice. never think it's a look at her. Oh, she's just a little tiny beauty, yeah. like little yeah. tiny beautiful little pixie face, you know, a little tiny nose, and she's just she'll always be my baby. I look at her and I go, I love that little singing thing you did together on <laughs> you posted it on Instagram. Yeah, you like singing off. It's, it's so cool. I'm so proud of her, honestly. Yeah. Like to sing with her is an absolute privilege. I used to get her, her up to sing with me at events when she was like 14, 15, and it was 
absolutely loved it and she hated it. She was like, oh, mom, really? I get her up to sing and now she gets me up to sing. Right. She's like... What about writing? You've been interested in writing? I feel like, you, I feel like you'd be... I'd like to direct. Really? Yeah. I think be, you'd be very good at I think you'd be very good at directing, yeah. Go over yeah. there, you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you. Yeah. What you do as you're told. You don't, no, I'd like... I'd don't like... start. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to direct. I think directing's probably the next thing. If I'm behind the camera. Yeah. Management and... Artist management and directing would be my thing. Okay. okay. Amazing. Thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, it's been about... Hopefully you enjoyed it, your first one. I did. It was awful. <laughs> 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 it's cool here as well. I like it. Uh, it's cool. It's, but yeah, it's been a real pleasure to, you know, learn more about you. And Thank yeah, we, you. we've uh, had fun having you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Kim Marsh, everyone. <laughs>